This is College Softball on the SEC Network. Tonight we're coming to you live from News Park in Starkville, Mississippi for a good old fashioned SEC Big 12 showdown as number one Oklahoma is in Starkville. Take on the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Good evening and welcome to News Park alongside Tri Latham. I'm Anthony Craven. Great to be with you. Great crowd on hand. Exciting matchup tonight. The Bulldogs welcome in Charlie the defending national champions. Yes, the Bulldogs welcome in Oklahoma and the Sooners are on a they're at a hot start. Not surprised by anyone. No, not at all. <laughs> it is uh they're on a 17 17 and 1 right now. And you see Jada Coleman here. She is a hot, she's on a hot start for the Sooners. Uh, she has a bad average right now of 478. And I mean, that is, that's impressive within itself. Uh, with 46 at bats on the year. The one thing that, that stands out to me right now, though, is those doubles and home runs. She has six doubles on the year and five home runs. Uh, for the center fielder, she, she's just doing, she's lighting things up. But on the, on the contrary, the Bulldogs have freshman Nadia Barbary right now going. And one thing about her is she's swinging a hot bat for the Bulldogs with a 311 batting average right now. Uh, on the year, Barbary has 45 at bats. Uh, she had she scored eight runs, uh, 14 hits on the year, and two home runs of herself. And she had a big game last night in the in the Dogs, six to five victory over Southeastern Louisiana. And there you see the starting pitcher this evening for head coach Samantha Ricketts and Mississippi State, a true freshman, right-hander Charlie Josie Marin. Josie Marin in the circle has been on fire all year, Anthony. 7-0 right now in the circle with a 1.20 ERA, and that in itself is impressive, but the fact that she is a true freshman, it, it, it shows things that are, you know, in sight for the Bulldogs, primarily drop ball pitcher. So curious to see what she can do here versus this powerful Sooner lineup. Yeah, big stage for a true freshman right here, Marin. And she'll pitch to the All-American, Jada Coleman, who Charlie mentioned just a moment ago. That first pitch is downstairs, ball one, and we're underway here in Stormfield. 6.02, first pitch, local time. There you see the Sooners lineup, and they are extremely talented. Leading things off is Coleman. Absolutely. First three up here for the Sooners, Coleman, Jennings, and Lee are, I think, two of the three, maybe all three are All-Americans. So that's one thing that you, to note for, you know, the viewers at home and even the people here in the stands. By the way, Anthony, this is an amazing crowd tonight. We've got a near-capacity crowd that is still coming into the ballpark, as you would expect for a matchup for the number one team and defending national champion, two-time defending national champion comes to town. The pitch misses and the count is now two balls and a strike. On Jada Coleman, the junior left-handed power hitter, leadoff hitter for the Sooners, a Texas native. And there you see those gaudy numbers on the bottom of your screen, a nearly 500 batting average on the year. Nine RBI so far on the year. And one thing you'll notice here is the, the Bulldogs want this challenge. They want the Sooners to come in so they can they can test themselves before getting into SEC play. Uh, luckily for the Bulldogs, this week is opening week for SEC play, and they have a bye. They score bye for the first week. Um, getting a chance to you know get a few extra games in before they see uh, competition in the SEC, which for Coach Ricketts is a good thing. She wants she wants to she wants to see this Sooners team and see what. They're challenges can arise and what they can do to build a moment. A check swing from Coleman on a really good drop ball here on a 2-2 count from Marin. And you see her hold up there, third base umpire right there, Ted Royals. I just, you know, you check over there just to see, but great way to hold up there for, for Coleman. The payoff pitch up the middle, base hit. Sooners are on the bases. Leadoff single for Coleman. And she gets the Oklahoma offense going, hit number 23 for her to lead the team. Yeah, you see that hit right up the middle. Freshman Barbary shaded up, shaded towards the 3 4 hole there. But nice way for Coleman to find a gap in the infield and you know, just run that ball through the middle. So Coleman runs the bases now for the Sooners. Col Coleman on the year has uh, five stolen base attempts. Guess how many stolen bases she has? I'm gonna guess five. Yes. So you know, one thing you, you want to see here is see if the 
Sooners want to be aggressive here. Not to mention they have All-American up the bat right here in T.R.A. Jennings, but we'll see if they get aggressive and see if they can move her into scoring position without Jennings. Swing and a miss from Jennings on the first offering from Marin. Nothing and one the count. How important is it, Charlie, for the Bulldogs as a team, but Marin specifically, to get off to a good start? I mean, this is... This is one thing, like I kind of said earlier with Coach Ricketts, she wants to get off to a good start because she knows that this Sooners team, as soon as they get in this ball game and those bats get to rolling, it's pretty tough to stop. So one thing you want to do is you want to get out front and get this team off balance and kind of catch them off guard a little bit and get out front. Jennings, a junior for head coach Gasso. There she is, the legend. Patty Gasso in, in her own right is a coach of many. She has a record. Look at that record there, Anthony. <laughs> She's won over 80% of her games. 29 seasons now at the helm. That ball fouled hard. Back over towards third base. Staying alive is Jennings. Count remains, though, nothing in two. I mean, Coach Gasso with 1,413 1, wins is, I mean, most people lot. dream about that. So for her to live it is one thing, and I, I know from just watching her throughout her years, it's been amazing to watch and watch the players that she's produced. Because Anthony, as you know, she's produced some of some of the greatest players known to any softball fan out there. Started to build this program when she first got there in the 90s. Began to have some success, started to make it to Oklahoma City that had that huge 2000 season that ended with the school's first ever softball national title. And they have not looked back since. Absolutely. And you know the best thing about it? Coming up on, let's see, I have to look at it and see how many seasons he's been there. But she has one of her sons working side by side with her in JT Gasso. That's right. So, that, you that's know. That's how long she's been. It, that's how long she's in been. In Norman. <laughs> You know, and so that's that's a big thing. And so for Coach Gasso, I know. Boy, yeah. Charlie yeah. swinging and a miss. And a huge strikeout for Marion. Jennings goes down swinging. That is just the second time this year that Jennings has been struck out. I mean, you look at this drop ball. Marion knows she has one spot to put this ball so that it doesn't go anywhere, and she doesn't. Nice, nice hit by Jackie McKenna behind the plate to, to save that ball and not let. Jada Coleman at first, you know, advance. So Coleman remains at first. Now there's one out for the number three hitter in the order, the senior Haley Lee, the right-handed hitter who takes strike one. Haley Lee is a transfer from Texas A&M. So she brings some SEC experience to this Big 12 offense and defense. Um, we've seen she's been splitting some time behind the plate with a sophomore, if I'm not mistaken, in Sophia Nugent, and also a senior in Kenzie Hansen. So, you know, you love to see this Sooner lineup. High fly ball, it's gone, but it's foul. And that ball is just foul. And one thing I can tell you here is you, you kind of breathe a sigh. If you take a look at this pitch here, this ball, it, Anthony, it doesn't miss by much but it nevertheless is foul, and I guarantee you that Bulldogs defense is happy along with there. Yeah, so maybe five to 10 yards at the most foul there in the left field corner. Nothing in two, second straight batter that Marin's got ahead of. Nothing in two. We'll see if she can finish off the deal. Ball gets away from McKenna. Coleman will take off for second. She'll get there, no throw attempted. And the Sooners have a runner in scoring position with less than two outs. It's just what you love to see from a, fre a true freshman pitcher in Josie Marin and getting ahead of these hitters, especially these powers, these powerful Sooner hitters. So one thing that you'd like to see here is you just see her, you know, find her seat and settle in here. Let her defense play behind and she's going to be okay. That'll get scored a wild pitch that allows Coleman to advance. And now the delivery to Lees. Just a little bit low into the outside. So the count is now two and two on the Sooners DP. Home plate umpire James Colsey just, just a bit low there yeah. for his liking, and I, I do I do agree there. That's one of those pitches that as a pitcher though you'd love to get because it's it's right there. It's a good take. Absolutely. By Lee. 
That's the, a similar pitch that struck out Jennings just a few moments ago. That ball was down and inside. Now the count's full. You got first base open, but you've got a good hitter in Nugent to be on deck circle. Yeah, Sophia Nugent sitting, sitting in the on deck circle here. The one thing you don't want to give her is two batters or two runners on when she comes to the plate. She's been on fire for the Sooners this year. And, but the one thing that you know is it's, it only starts with getting one. So. The payoff pitch, line in the right, one hopping it in front of Landers. And Coleman quickly rounds third and she'll get home. And the Sooners are on the board. That ball not filled it cleanly by Landers. Didn't get past her, Charlie, but a little bit of a bobble out there. Wasn't quite sure if he should dive for it or, or grab it on the short hop. And Coleman had plenty of time to come around to score. You see Haley Lee just stick the bat out there, and I mean, pokes that ball right in the right field. And it seems that that ball took a little skip on Landers and kind of popped to, the, to her right, our left. Um, so one thing there is, good thing is she kept it in front and didn't let Haley Lee get to second. But unfortunately, that does score a run from second in Jada Coleman. And Coleman may have scored anyway. She can run well, but. Absolutely on the year with those five stolen bases. You know she's fast, so she's a threat anytime she gets on the base path. So give Lee credit for an RBI single to right that scores Coleman, and the Sooners have drawn first blood. They're on top one to nothing over Mississippi State. Here in the top of the first, as the sophomore righty Sophia Nugent steps in. A 381 batting average. She's batting in seven runs so far, and as a sophomore, they are the Sooner. The Sooner staff, Coach Gasso, and and all are very proud of this young lady. They are very excited to see what she has to offer in the future as well. So it's one thing to see her in the, that four hole right now. See what she can do here to help this offense out in any way she can. She has eight hits on the year, has driven in 14 runs with those eight hits. Half her hits on the season are home runs. So definitely has some power. That ball up and in, catches the what, top right quadrant there of the strike zone. Absolutely, and I venture to guess Marin's take on this is let me get this ball up and in on the hands. You know, kind of jam these sooner hitters up. Get some miss hits in there somewhere and, you know, just keep it out of their wheelhouse. The 2-1. Now she goes back to the drop ball and misses down and in. The count three and one, a hitter's count to Nugent. The Sooner is right fielder. She has walked four times on the season. This is her 22nd plate appearance here in 2023. With four home runs on the year, you can tell she has some pop to that bat. Ball lifted out to left, diving grab by Mala Ulu. And running back to first base to avoid being doubled up there is Lee. That's a big out number two and a nice defensive play by State's captain. You see this ball, I just, Nugent does exactly what she needs to do and put this ball in play. The one thing that I can say is Malala Ulu is playing closer to the fence, so that ball was dying as she was coming in. One thing I love to see is the effort there that the senior outfielder gives to her pitcher, Marin. Mar that does nothing but fire Marin up and eliminates a runner off the base pads. It's the top of the first, and Malala Ulu already has the grass stains <laughs> on the pants. The equipment, equipment managers around the world are like, hey, we'll give you a pass on that great play. Alyssa Brito, the third baseman for the Sooners. At the dish right now, her first appearance of the ball game. The Tustin, California junior, a 426 hitter. But Oklahoma's got five in the lineup tonight. Five 400 or better hitters on the season. <laughs> and, and, and not to mention that the, the other four aren't, you know, they're close. There's a one hopper out to Macy Graham. The third baseman back hands it, throws the first in time. One to nothing, Oklahoma on top. Bottom of the first here in Starkville, Mississippi State at the plate. And they will face this young lady, 
a junior right-hander out of California. Nicole May, whose numbers on the year, Charlie, are almost video game-like. <laughs> That's absurd, right? I, I mean, you can't, you can't feel them better than that. Five wins, no losses, but that ERA, 0.00 that's, ERA. That's not a mistake, folks. She's literally not given up any runs through her first 32 innings on the season. I mean, in a strike to ball ratio there, 55 to 9. <laughs> that's impressive within itself. She's a combination of drop, rise, change. She throws a little bit of everything, though, Anthony. So expect her to get out front earlier, early with these Bulldog hitters and see what she can do. The Bulldog lineup features at the top of it Macy Graff, Bradley St. Clair, and Chloe Malaulu. Cook, Bradley, and Landers are the middle of the game. Barbary Kennedy and McKenna round out. The lineup one through nine for head coach Samantha Ricketts. In her fourth season at the helm here in Starkville, May starts off Graff with a strike on the outside corner. Expect this. This to be a great matchup here, and Nicole, a veteran in Nicole May, but also a, a youngster in Macy Graff, is, who has lit up this Bulldogs offense right now, batting a smooth 450, close, close to 500. You love to see that from a freshman, a true freshman, another true freshman to highlight for this Bulldogs offense and this Bulldogs team. 18 hits on the year for Graff, the Texas native, a left-handed leadoff hitter. And when you look at the kind of player Graf is, players like her, Charlie, are really starting to become the brand new prototypical leadoff hitter in Division I softball. Absolutely, she can do a little bit of everything. She'll play the small game on you, and she'll also put it over your head. So one thing here to see is how, how well she trusts herself and see what she can do to a veteran like Nicole May. Check swing, foul tip off the bat of Graf, and the count evens up two and two. The Bulldogs have a senior heavy lineup. Graf and Barbary are both freshmen. Everyone else in the starting <laughs> order tonight, a senior or a fifth year senior in some cases. Anthony, I mean, that is, that is something there when you have all those seniors and then you don't have a single sophomore or junior in the lineup, but you have two true freshmen. So that speaks volumes to these two true freshmen and what they can do and their abilities. You got that right. You got to be really, really talented as a youngster to break into this lineup on this MSU team this season. Absolutely. With as many players back as as they bring back from that team last year that made it all the way to the Super Regionals. Swing and a miss on a rise ball from May, and Graf goes down swinging. Strikeout number one, out number one here in the home half of the first. And just, just as we talked earlier, she throws a little bit of everything, so this rise ball coming in there, is changing the eye level of what Macy Graf has seen in that at bat. When she went down, she went up as well to get the strikeout. No one on, one gone for the senior Center fielder, Bariley St. Clair, second straight lefty here at the top of the Bulldog lineup tonight. Swing and a miss at the first pitch, strike one. Absolutely, Bariley St. Clair, senior from San Rock, Alabama. She is a little fiery something here. You got a 304 batting average, no home runs, but she does have four RBI on the year right now. So one thing you want to see is this senior kind of get something sparked here for this Bulldog offense. Trying to slap one the opposite way right there and got underneath it and fouled it off for strike two. And going back to what we talked about with Macy Graff, Riley St. Clair does the same thing and using small ball to her advantage when she needs to. But you also see her stand in there and she might even hit it over your head even being at 5'5", five five, she'll still knock it over. Her game has definitely evolved over the years. Takes that rise ball for a ball and the count's one and two. Thing you love to see here is the patience in these Bulldog hitters. Probably St. Clair with a one-two count here, but isn't fooled by that rise ball coming through. Nicole May wanted to see if she could get her just like she got her, her teammate in Macy Graff with that rise ball. The one-two. Fouled back. St. Clair will stay alive. And you know what, Charlie, to your point, one thing the Bulldogs have for They've done a lot of things well here in the early going. They're 17 and five. One of those things offensively is they have not struck out very much so far this year. They've, they've done a really good job 
of putting the ball in play more often than not. Absolutely, for this Bulldogs offense, you know, being more patient at the at the plate is one thing that Coach Ricketts told herself she wanted to be more. Oh, she went around. She went around and Tyler Bratton, the Bulldog associate head coach, not happy at all with that call. So, Coach Tyler Braddon here is not happy. And you look at this replay here and just see. She de he has a reason to be, yeah. be mad there. Yeah, she held she, up. She definitely held up. And one thing I can say, we talk about it all the time with these umpires. They have a tough job of getting themselves, you know, when they come, especially in matchups such as this one, where you have an SEC team versus <laughs> the number one team in the country. So what you want to see here is just, you know, them calm down. That, that may have been a bad call, but what you want to see is them calm down and not let that affect them come right back. Chloe Malaulu, first pitch, hits one high into the air, shallow in right. Nugent comes in, she makes the catch, and the dogs are retired. In We go to the top of the second here in Starkville. Beautiful night for some softball activity and a big one right here between Mississippi State and number one Oklahoma, the two-time defending national champions. You know, this will be in a couple of years an SEC showdown. And I believe 2025, 24. Yes. 24. So after this season. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The 2024-25 uh, sports season. Yep, there so you go. So for softball, it'll be 2025. Yes. I mean that for to just so imagine two years. Yeah. To imagine having this team in this stadium every other year, depending on how they kind of map it out. There, there's that's you bring up a very good question. No one's quite. I'm sure someone knows, but no one's told me how in the world they're going to start doing the conference scheduling <laughs> for softball. They Once you add Oklahoma and Texas. Well, we both know they definitely have an idea. They probably have about three or four ideas how they want to do it. Yes. <laughs> At least three or four, <laughs> if not more. I mean, it's already a headache trying to figure out who plays who right now. Oh, 14 teams. Man, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of mentioning from earlier, you know, they're st starting SEC play today. That's right. So that's right. March 10th is the official SEC softball kickoff day. So it's you know, just to think that you're gonna have this this team plus Texas in this conference. We got timeout called here by the Oklahoma hitter Hanson, the number six hitter in the order. She called time, and I think Coach Ricketts thought she called time a little too late right there. I. I I don't know exactly, you know, the thought process there. I know a lot of hitters want to make sure they kind of keep themselves prepared and ready. Maybe Marin was in her motion and Coach Ricketts. It, it was felt, close. It was very close. Yeah, it was very close. Just looking at it from, from my view, from our view, I should say, it was very close. And I think she has an argument there, but the call was made and you now you have to move on. You go. Let's take a look back here and see. She has definitely started her yep. motion. Yep. At, you know, and it's one thing. We talk about it, players settling into the game. You know, the umpires have to settle in too, so you want to see them settle in a little bit here and kind of shake the nerve off because this is a big time game for them as well, getting started in the season. Foul tip. So the count remains one and two. You're right, Charlie. Big crowd on hand. And you know that the umpires, they get a little, a little nervous sometimes too. No, no, they wouldn't admit that to you. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. But, but they do. But in a veteran and home plate umpire in James Colsey, you know. The third. The third. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting the third. <laughs> it's <laughs> so, official. It is official. So, you know, he has some, some, you know, things to shake off there before they get into SEC play. Because you do know that after this weekend, it becomes every weekend from here until the end of the season, you know, back-to-back -back SEC games, SEC matchups, marquee matchups. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's huge. It's like a super regional matchup almost every single weekend from here on out for the teams involved and the umpires. A little blooper, 
That's going to drop foul behind the bag at third. Graf gave chase, so did Kennedy and Malaulu, and no one could get there in time. So a good battle going on right here between Marin in the circle and Hanson, the senior at the plate, a 346 hitter on the season. Hanson has been a great bat for the Sooners. Um, one thing I can say is she has been quite the, you know, player at the plate and behind the dish. She brings great experience into the Sooners lineup. And you talk to Coach Gasso and just hear how she talks about Kenzie Hanson. And you can only think that she brings so much to this lineup. Look at that. Huge strikeout there for Marin, her second of the night. And she's off to a good start here at the top of the second. You look at this pitch here, Marin goes her bread and butter and that drop ball and she does exactly what she needs to do. She makes it look tempting at first and then as soon as it gets to Hanson, it just drops right off the plate. Beautiful love. ball placement there love by the freshman right-hander. Absolutely. And that's a big battle to win for Hanson, or for Marin, rather, as she retires Hanson and now will pitch to Boone, who flashes bunt and then takes it for a strike. Riley Boone here is senior in the lineup, batting 441 right now with 34 at bats. And she is a speedster for this Sooners offense. And one thing you, you'll know, you, you kind of notice here, you see the corners are in preparing for that bunt or whatever she does to put that ball on the ground in the dirt. They're prepared. They, they want to be on her as quick as possible because they know they only have a split set to get that ball in their glove, out, into her. Boone's been a very difficult out in 2023 on base percentage of over 570. I mean, that's, that's just amazing. A, a great hitter in Boone, but now you see with a one-two count here, freshman Josie Marin going right at her. Love to see it for the freshman in the circle tonight in, in Marin and just see that she, she goes, hey, I can, I can do this. He's done a good job getting out in front of most of the Sooners batters so far. Just missed with that one. And the count evens up two and two. Absolutely. Marin goes, hey, you, you might be number one in the, in the country right now, but that doesn't, that doesn't drive me away. I'm going to go right at you. The freshman does not look to be phased here in the early going. And you love to see it. And the one thing that I think I always say, Anthony, when we're, when we're calling is you you love that out of a freshman because not only does she have the confidence, but she gives her defense confidence behind her, which senior Chloe Malaulu, I mean, just shows the confidence she has in her abilities as well. So that picks up, it kind of works both ways. Yep. Malaulu picks up Marin, Marin comes right back and picks up Malaulu. A 2-2 count to Boone, who has 15 hits on the season. Again, fouls one back. Good job there by Boone. A couple of pitches that were really good pitches from Marin, and Boone has spoiled both of them to stay alive. As you see the captain, Chloe Malaulu, there in left, made a big time defensive play from Mississippi State in the first inning to limit the Oklahoma damage there and held them to one run. I tell you what, those pants don't seem to be getting any cleaner, <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> so, but the one thing you see here. Another swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts, and Marin is really filling up the strike zone here early going. And not necessarily filling up the strike zone. Look at this back to back three pitches. She is just going outside, outside, outside. Eventually, boom, she didn't take any of them. She just kept going with the ball, and as far as it went, she went with it. Marin. Now pitching to the number eight hitter in the lineup, Sanders. One of two sophomores in the lineup tonight for Coach Gasso. Backhanded foul right towards the bag at third for strike one. That ball just fouled down the line there. Love to see the effort there by Macy Graff. She, you know, just a little bit out of her reach there. Nevertheless, it's foul ball. So now you have a 0-1 count for freshman Marin in the circle. And a sophomore in Cindy Sanders here. Sand Sydney, Sydney, so sorry. Yeah. Sanders hitting 242, one of the few players not hitting over 300 on the season. The ball comes in and hits her. Boy, Marin made a mistake right there, and Sanders gets plunked 
and she'll be on at first base now with two outs. You'd, you'd like to you'd like to see her stay away from hitting her there, but this ball I think just gets away from Mary and, and I mean it happens. It happens now. She just has to bounce back and getting ready to see a, a freshman. Here we go with a freshman on freshman matchup. So she gets to see Quincy Lilio here and see what she can do. Lilio, a 385 nine hole hitter. You saw her step up in the box right there. She can slap. The Oceanside California native, a left handed bat. As Charlie mentioned, only a freshman. But there you see some solid numbers on the year, including four runs driven in and one home run. With a 385 batting average here. Lilio's just, you know, she's doing exactly what she needs to do. And for her to be in this Sooner lineup, as good of a lineup as we know yes. this, Sooner, this Sooner team puts out, to be a freshman in this lineup is, speaks volumes. Yeah, they didn't put her out there because there's no one else to put out there. <laughs> Not she, at all. She, you have to earn your spot in the lineup, and for a freshman to do that on this team is very impressive. That ball is taken off the corner, and the count is now 3-0. and Marin was just smoothly going right along, strike out against Boone and Hansen, and then she plunks the, for average, weakest hitter in Oklahoma's lineup, and now she has to battle back, and this Oklahoma could get something brewing here with a two-out rally as Marin finds the strike zone there. Count that it still remains three and one. The biggest thing here for Marin is take a deep breath and say, hey, she's a nine-hole hitter. Don't want to see the top of the lineup again just yet. So, you know, take a deep breath and think, hey, I got this. Trust your, trust your instincts and trust your, trust your abilities here. Yeah, three one count, you're still in it. You can produce a ground ball here or a pop up and get out of this inning. That's in there for strike two. So Marin's battled back and has worked the count full against Lilio with Coleman in the on deck circle. With a, a three one count there, I'd like to see Lilio be a little bit more aggressive. I know Marin had been a little wild in her early. In earlier in that at bat, in this at bat, I should say. But want to see her be a little aggressive. Three one count. You know something's coming that you can you can hit. Lines one in the left for a base hit. That's going to roll all the way to the wall. Coming around third is Sanders. She's being waved home. Throw home is not in time. Oklahoma gets a big two out RBI double from the freshman Lilio. And that hit by pitch on Sanders comes back to hurt Marin and the Bulldogs. Oklahoma adds to the lead. They're now on top by two. Absolutely. Take a look here at this, this ball by Lilio. And she puts that ball right in the gap away from Malau. And one thing that you love to see here is just the hustle by Sanders around the bases to make it home and, and score another run for the Sooners offense to put them up two to nothing. Timeout called, and there's Josh Johnson, the Bulldog associate head coach. His first circle visit tonight. Talking things over there with the Bulldog battery. Marin, the pitcher, and McKenna, the catcher. The one thing here that I, I could only imagine what Coach Johnson is saying here is, hey, we're back to the top of this sooner order. Let's, let's calm down. We're all right. It's only two runs up on the board. Let's calm down here and trust your instincts and trust what you know what to do. Because she got rattled there a little bit. I, maybe maybe that HBP that you know she gave to Sanders, maybe it just didn't sit well and that just kind of threw her off. One thing you want to see here is the freshman just dial back in because we know that she's been pretty effective early. Conversation is over between Marin and her coach Johnson. And now she will pitch once again to Coleman, who had a base hit her first time up. A single up the middle to lead off the ball game, scored Oklahoma's first run of the night as well. Takes strike one to start this at bat. <laughs> you see the look on Coleman's face there. She did not expect that pitch to stay up, and she knows one that she probably could have put a good swing on. The one thing here, you look at Coleman's numbers, 489 batting average right now is I mean, in, impressive within itself. The, the thing about it is, we talked about it earlier, Anthony. It, 
it's five batters in the single lineup with a 400 batting average or better. So that, that speaks volumes there. And we have a pretty good sample size now, 19 games in. This is the 20th game of the year for the Sooners. So it's not like they got these gaudy batting averages based off one really good weekend. They have been facing some good teams and some good pitchers and have some very impressive offensive numbers. Good pitch right there from Marin as that ball started on the outside, then broke back in and found the inside corner for a strike. Absolutely, Marin just nice curveball inside corner there. I mean, she went out for strike one, strike or ball. The second pitch was a ball, was close, wanted to get that call, but didn't get it, and then comes right back and goes inside for strike two. Now with a one-two count and fouled off pitch there. A little one-two count. All right, Marin's thinking to herself, hey, all right, we got this. Coleman's a great hitter, but I'm a great pitcher. So <laughs> I'd love to see her go right at Coleman right here and get this, get this out. Coleman fouled off the last pitch. So that counts one ball, two strikes, already 50 pitches thrown by Marin here in the first couple of innings. Off-speed pitch right between the legs of Brownlee at first. And that will score Lilio, and Coleman will dive into second base. And that's a mistake right there by the Bulldog infield, a normally solid infield, but a mistake right there, and that allows Oklahoma to plate their third run of the game. See this replay here, and this ball goes right through the legs of senior infielder Quanta Brownlee. The one thing you'd like to see her do there is just stay down on the ball. She picked that head up, and, and nothing ever, rarely ever good happens when you pick that head up and doesn't, don't keep your eyes on the ball. One thing you want to see there is from that senior Brownlee, just you know, calm down there. This ball right to you should be a routine play for you. That'll be an unearned run as Lilio scores. From second, Coleman reaches on the fielding error, the E3 charge to Brownlee. And she is now at second base, on base for the second time tonight as Jennings, the shortstop, and the two-hole hitter steps in. 0 for 1 this evening against Marin. 0 for 1 this evening. Coleman takes off for third and no throw attempted. That ball got away just a little bit from McKenna. And there you saw the speed of Coleman. And it, exactly, the speed from Coleman there. She recognizes that ball is in the dirt and away from McKenna. Even if it's even if it's a foot away there, she was off. She was off the base and ready to go as soon as that ball was in the dirt. The one thing you like to see there is the aggressiveness from Coleman, knowing her speed that she can get from second to third there without a throw from McKenna. Swing and a miss, strike two. One and two goes the count on Jennings. We struck out her first time up in the first. Just the second time she's gone down on strikes this season. Has 22 hits on the year and 17 RBIs. That ball just off the inside corner. And the count evens up two and two. This pitch here, I mean, great pitch by Marin. And it, it is, it's, yeah. it's inside, but nevertheless, great pitch. A one-two count to an All-American in Jennings. Now you have a two-two count on her. See what you can do here. There you go. Strikeout number two on Jennings. And for Marin, strike. Last night, we opened up the Bulldog Invitational with Mississippi State and Southeastern Louisiana. And Charlie, a wild back and forth game. A lot of offense in the middle innings. Lots of weird plays too. Some bloop singles and we saw both teams hit some home runs. And when it's all said and done, Mississippi State is able to come away victorious. Kenley Hawk gets the win in relief. Six to five over a good Lions team out of Hammond, Louisiana. I mean, they gave them every bit of what they wanted in a challenge. Not coming in and, and backing down. To this Bulldogs team and you know one thing you love to see there is the fight in the Bulldogs to stay in it and not only stay in it but win it at the end. Bottom of the second Oklahoma three Mississippi State zero. May is back in the circle for her second inning of work starting pitcher for the Sooners. Still has that clean sheet on the year no runs 
given up. She's facing Paige Cook, followed in lineup by Aquana Brownlee and Kirsten Landers, the middle of the Bulldog order. Absolutely, a senior out of Cornelia, Georgia, and Paige Cook with a 370 batting average, two home runs, and 16 RBI on the year. She has come in clutch for this Bulldogs offense lately. Um, and that's just not at this point in the season. At the very beginning of the season, although she may have not started every game for the Bulldogs, she has done her job in coming in off the bench and just lighting the fire and sparking this team into some huge wins. Has 20 hits on the year. Also has drawn seven walks, only struck out twice on the campaign. Fouls that one off and the count two and two. Going back to last year, Anthony, she was a pretty tough batter. If not the toughest batter, I can't remember correctly, if not the toughest batter in the SEC to strike out last yeah. year. So that's huge for this Bulldogs offense to be able to retain her in this lineup and still on this team, whether she's in the lineup or not, you know, that's some veteran experience that you need in order to get through a lot of things. Because you know in softball, it, it's very up and down sometimes. But with the experience of Paige Cook versus what she's seen, it, it's a huge tool for this Bulldogs offense and this Bulldogs team in general. The count is full, three and two. May has only walked nine batters in 33 innings, has struck out 57. I mean, that, 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 that ratio is amazing in itself. May, very impressive of a player. And, and not to mention, she is only a junior. <laughs> I say that with a question mark because the experience that she brings to this, this offense, or this, sorry, this team, it's, it's impeccable. Yeah, I mean, she'll, she is due to come back next year, too, for Coach Gasso. Ground ball foul, left side. We'll do it again. Count remains full, three and two on Cook, who's trying to become the first base runner of the night for Mississippi State. For Coach Gasso, that's got to be something that is very exciting to know that you have Nicole May although she may not start all the time for you, in your back pocket to just do things like this and come to come into this game ready to start and ready to face a Bulldogs offense who's lately been on fire. This is May's eighth appearance and sixth start in the circle this year. That ball's high and outside. Good job there by Paige Cook. The veteran gets on base. And the Dogs have a base runner for the first time tonight as Brownlee now will step to the plate. Slight pause there in Paige Cook before she threw her bat to the side to make sure that that was a ball. It was, I mean, it was borderline. That yeah. was borderline. But nevertheless, great at bat from Paige Cook to, to see and respect the zone of home plate umpire James Colsey and know that, hey, this could go either way, but I'm going to trust my instincts and hold up on this pitch so that I can get myself on base. And here comes Brownlee. First pitch is a rise ball that misses for ball one. And now time is called by the Sooners. The catcher, Hansen, calls time. You love to see this from Kenzie Hansen here. Going to talk to Nicole May and say, hey, that one, you know, may have been a little bit out, a little bit up, don't know. But nevertheless, it's one runner. Let's limit the damage and let's go right at Brownlee. And a powerful hitter in Brownlee. You look at her numbers here and a 368 batting average with four home runs and 23 RBI on the year. A big time for this Bulldogs offense to have her in the lineup. She's trying to make up for the error she committed last half inning, which allowed Oklahoma to score a run. The Bulldogs now have the tying run in the on-deck circle with no one out here in the home half of the second. This senior coming into this game with four home runs on the year. Anthony, I don't know if you know or, or whatnot, but she came into this season with only one home run. And she's a senior. In her career. In her career. She came into this season with one home run in her career. She has four home runs on the year so far. Love to see how this bat has absolutely started to become on fire and explode for this Bulldogs offense. 
There's a ball lifted into center field. Coming in is Coleman. She makes the grab, throws to first. Ball rolls away from Sanders. But Cook elects to stay at first base. Didn't want to tempt fate right there and, and try to go to second base. And that's out number one. I mean, Paige Cook there gets off the base enough. You know, when you look at this play right here, and it's one of those bloopers that it's kind of, it's a tough play for most people. Coleman, I mean, makes it look easy. But Paige Cook did what, exactly what she needed to do. She got off far enough to where she could either get to second or get, to, get back to first. Um, so that play was close there to coming from Coleman back to first, but at the same time, it was a great job by Paige Cook being able to get back and stay on the base pass for this Bulldogs offense. So one on and one gone for the lefty, Kirsten Landers, the Charleston, West Virginia native, a senior transfer from Florida State. The experience that Landers has brought to this team has been one of Coach Ricketts' highlights. Could be two. Relay is not quite in time. So the inning continues. Landers hustled enough to get safe at first, but Cook is out at second, and there are two gone. You see this play here. I mean, a textbook double play ball for the Sooners defense, but Landers, although she has that knee brace on that left knee, she does not let that slow her down, and she gets down the face pad, beats that out, which you love to see. But kind of like I was saying earlier, she brings experience from a World Series winning team in Florida State, Coach Lonnie Alameda, you know, she was a big tool for them. And Coach Alameda continues to, you know, she harped on how good of a player she was for her. She just, you know, she kind of, not necessarily, I don't want to say ran out of eligibility, because she didn't. But she may not, it may not have had a roster spot there for her in order to keep her on the squad. Coach Ricketts was very happy about yes. that, because she was able to bring that experience yes. to this Bulldogs. <laughs> You know, this, this Bulldogs team to, you know, add veteran experience from another, although another program, veteran experience that knows the game and knows what it feels like to win. And she was on that Florida State team that lost to the Bulldogs a season ago in that Tallahassee Regional. Although she was hurt during that time, she was definitely there. And I would, I would love to think that that may have Factored in her Sealed decision, the deal? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Factored into her decision to come to, to Mississippi State with Coach Ricketts and her team. Landers running at first base. At the plate is the freshman who we highlighted in the open of the broadcast, Nadia Barbary. It's Bar one hard foul left side, and the count's one and two. Barbary had a huge night last night for the Bulldogs, and she wants to repeat that today. And in Get her back to rolling here against this junior pitcher, Nicole May. Get something started here for the Bulldogs. They have one runner on right now, and she would love nothing more than to put this ball in the gap and see how fast and how far Kirsten Landers can go. Barbary, a 311 hitter on the season. A right-hander batting in the number seven spot in the lineup. She strikes out, and Nicole May issues the walk to Cook but gets out of the inning unscathed. The Sooner is still on top by three. We head to inning number three in Starkville, Oklahoma, number one team in the nation, on top of Mississippi State, three nothing alongside Charlie Latham, I'm Anthony Craven. Great to be with you on a beautiful night for softball here in Starkville. Chilly temperatures, but clear skies and really nice weather. And even though Charlie, her team is down right now, three nothing, I think a good start all things considered for the Bulldog right-hander, Josie Marin. Absolutely, so far four strikeouts on the game against this number one team in the country. Love to see it from a true freshman. She, one thing she's done, she's gotten rattled here, here and there a couple times this, this game so far. But love to see how she's calmed down. She's settled herself down, and she's gotten, I mean, some great hitters to swing at some pitches that they may not swing at all the time. Lee comes up and hits that ball. 
right in between the five and the six players. Graf and Kennedy split the difference, and that ball ends up in left field. Infield, or a leadoff single, rather, for Lee, her first hit of the ball game. Talking about finding holes early. She wasted no time getting on that pitch and putting that ball in the five, six hole there, right out of the reach of Macy Graf and right out of the reach of also shortstop Madison Kennedy. So the one thing here, you have a leadoff runner on for this Sooners offense, just settle in, get the ball on the ground and see a double play happen. At the plate now, Sophia Nugent swing in the miss, strike one. Guarantee you here the, the idea is not to let Sophia Nugent and the, tr the sophomore beat you here with anything that, you know, to the outfield. She wants to keep this ball down in the zone. She may surprise her here with a rise ball here or there, but she wants to keep this ball down in the zone away from Nugent to produce a ground ball here. Get out of get out of this pretty much not unscathed just yet, but produce a ground ball to get a double play, at least a chance. The Bulldog infield at double play depth. That ball went up and in for ball one. So the count one and one on Nugent. We lined out to Mala Ulu on that nice grab in left field. Her first time up in the first. Speaking of double plays, I'm pretty sure if I if I saw the record of stat line, Madison Kennedy has rolled a double play in the last five games she's played. That's incredible. That is, I mean, that's that's impressive. <laughs> it so, is. And, so, and so we're we're looking for number six. We're looking for right number here. six here. Absolutely. One thing is, you know. It'll be tough. You got Haley Lee over there at first, but you, know, you just want to see. You want to see what they can do if they can calm themselves down. Plan a huge opponent here, but calm yourself down and do what you know to do. Trust your instincts because at the end of the day, this Sooners offense is they're going to be them regardless. So you you let them do what they do and you do what you do best. Number 18, the Bulldog veteran shortstop. Madison and Kennedy getting ready here to make a play if needed. One and two, the count on Nugent. Little comebacker to the circle, drop, picked up, throwing the first, still in time to get the force out there of Nugent. Lee goes to second into scoring position for Oklahoma. Yeah, we, we go back and look at this play here, Anthony, and the one thing you love to see is Josie Marin doesn't speed herself up. This ball comes to her and, and at first, it bobbles a little bit, but she she knows she has time. Nugent, not the fastest runner on this in the Sooners lineup, so she has time to to collect herself and get that ball over the first. Love to see her not make an errant throw there. Just calm down and get it over the first for the first out of the game, or the first out of this. Inning. Alyssa Burrito steps in, first pitch, line, down the line and left. That'll be a stand-up double and an RBI for Brito. Coming around and scoring from second is Lee, and Oklahoma has now scored at least a run in each of their first three at-bats. They're on top now by four. This hit right here from Brito right down the line, the left field line, and love to see Haley Lee on her, on her high horse there right off the off the bat. She knows that ball is on, down in the grass. Has no reason to pull up. Coach Patty Gasso on third just sending her. Hey, let's see how fast you are and see if you can make it make it home. That would be for Brito. RBI number 18 on the season. She's now second on the team behind only Lee in runs driven in this year. Now we get to get a chance to see a senior Round ball gets through for a base hit. Stopping at third is Brito. And that's another Oklahoma single. They have three of those now in this half inning. And they've got runners at the corners, less than two outs. So now you, you see runners on the corners for this Sooners offense. One thing I can tell you, Anthony, just kind of being observant here, they've gotten very aggressive on that first pitch. The last, I think, three batters have all swung at that first pitch and have all put it in play. So the one thing here that you just see from them is maybe they've changed that game plan up a little bit here and not watching the, per the first pitch. They've, they've got comfortable seeing Marin and seeing what she could do. And they're like, all right, let's jump on her. Let's, let's see if we can apply some pressure here. 
Runner at first base is Hanson. Brito is at third. You've got at the plate now for Oklahoma, a pinch hitter, number 40, Elena Torres. The senior right-hander steps in for the first time to swing the bat for the Sooners. RBI chance right here with less than two outs. Absolutely, Torres coming into this game, you know, you never know what opportunity you'll get. We say it all the time, Torres a senior, you never know what opportunity you're gonna get, especially in a, a powerhouse of an offense like this. So just kind of building off of that and, and knowing what she can do. She has a 250 batting average, but that doesn't, that doesn't stop Coach Gasso from giving her an opportunity here to show what she can do, especially against a great pitcher in Marin. The ball got away there momentarily from McKenna, but Burrito stayed at third. Hansen did move up though in the second, so two on now in scoring position. A base hit would more than likely score a couple of runs for the Sooners. But you gotta think that Torres right now just trying to put the ball somewhere in the outfield. Get a fly ball here to at least score one on a sack fly, pop up right behind home plate, off the netting, ends up in McKenna's glove. I saw you were ready. <laughs> that right hand went up, you were ready to catch that one. You, you <laughs> saw me, you saw me. I, I saw that ball and it gets right to the top of the net, Anthony, and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna have to make a play on this. Well, last weekend we had at least two balls like that. There it is. <laughs> you gotta look in your reflexes there, but, but you saw what I did. Nothing. <laughs> Going to first. No, okay, yeah. No, that should be a foul ball, right? James Colsey, I think, is going to bring everyone back. That should be a foul ball. James, Col James Colsey is like, hey, slow your roll, slow your roll. Let's see here. Uh, I don't know. I don't that, know. He called it foul. He set the foul tip. I, I, just that looking. Was, that was close. Looking at that replay there, I don't think she touched it there. I don't think so either. Nevertheless. The Bulldogs threw down to first and then threw home because Brito was trying to come home on a slide. That was going to be a really interesting sequence there, but it's all for naught. Absolutely. And Brito there, knowing her speed, quickly being aggressive there to come in, even with it possibly being two outs there quickly being aggressive to try to score that run and add another run to this lead for this Sooners offense. One ball, two strikes on Torres. A lengthy at bat right here. Marin has thrown 70 pitches so far. Has given up three earned runs, four runs total on six hits. Has two runners on base right now with just one out. Fly ball in the left, coming in's Mala Ulu. She grabs it, and yeah, good job there by Mala Ulu. The ball, though, is thrown over the head of McKenna, and Brito scores anyway. Yeah, Mala Ulu does exactly what she needs to do here in getting behind this ball, working behind it. You know, watch this replay here. She, she works behind this ball, sets herself up for a great throw, but then just lets the ball get away from her. They, the one thing you don't want to do there is sell the ball because it, it does exactly what the Sooners did. It produced a run. Brito, with that speed, was able to see that errant throw and get on her high horses to home. So the one thing there, you know, great play by Malulu and in securing that ball, but you would love to see her keep that ball down a little bit more, get it at least to where Jackie McKenna can handle it. Sanders now the batter with Hanson at third. That'll be an unearned run scored by Brito on a throwing error charged to the Bulldog left fielder, Chloe Malaulu. See up the bat here, Sidney Sanders. Got last half inning or last inning for the Sooners, kind of started with that hit by pitch. And You're right. And so, you know, the one thing here for, for Marin is see if she can wipe everything off that's happened go right at Sanders because nevertheless Sanders is still batting 242 so you want to see her go at her so that she doesn't have to come back to the top of that order like she did in the last half or last inning quarter so much. 
Swing and a miss, nice pitch. One and one goes the count on Sanders, who as Charlie mentioned, was hit by a pitch and scored last inning. I think that was strike two, I think you're, so. You're, you're correct. Okay, okay. I was a pitch behind there. Perfectly fine, it happens, you know. I, one thing you love to see here though is how Marin just goes at her with her best pitch. That drop ball gets her to whiff at it and now see what she can do here. Downstairs, now the count's back to even. Talking about veteran experience here and kind of kind of highlighting that a little bit. You got your senior catcher and Jackie McKenna behind the plate. Between each pitch, you love to see the communication from the senior to the freshman, the true freshman in the circle. It's like, hey, me and you right here, let's get this out, all right? Let's limit the damage. Check swing that she did not go around, says our first base umpire, Dave Reinecker. And you take a look here at this, see, just see if she she does hold up. Yeah, so, good call. You know, great call there. Now it's like, all right, you have a full count on your eight hole hitter. Marin, just go right at her and see what you can get here. The payoff pitch misses. And that'll be a walk issue to Sanders. So Sanders has been hit by a pitch and now has drawn a walk. And the eight hole hitter has done a good job of helping to turn over this lineup for Oklahoma tonight. Absolutely, and that pitch close there, but home plate umpire James Colsey said just a bit inside. So now, moving on to the nine hole hitter in Quincy Lilio, you wanna see her, Marin go, hey, I'm not getting back to the top of this sooner order. So now, you do what you know that you can do, and go right at her. Well, strike one there, yep, all right? Good pitch. It's a, it's a great start, all right? So you do what you know you can do and go right at her. Although she's batting 429 right now, still trust yourself. She has an on-base percentage of 529. That's, <laughs> that's the most impressive number of those four up there, in my opinion. Absolutely. For a freshman. It speaks volumes as to why she's in this lineup. Kennedy scoops it, throws the first in time to get the out and prevent any more runs to come across home plate. Oklahoma expands the lead. We head to the bottom of the third. Oklahoma, number one team in the nation for a reason. They are a rock solid club with tons of talent. And they are beginning to take control here in Starkville, leading five to nothing. As Nicole May will head back to the circle. And she'll face in this home half of the third, the eight, nine and leadoff hitters in the Bulldog order. That's Kennedy, McKenna and Graf. If anyone reaches, St. Clair is set to come back up as the Bulldogs are about to send some batters up for the second time tonight against May. Absolutely, and the Bulldogs want to see their offense just get started here. You know, they've had base runner here, they've had base runner there, but that's not enough to, to make up for the difference in the score here. So one thing they want to do is start by passing the bat and getting putting balls in play here to put some pressure on this Sooners defense to either make a play or, you know, get out of a jam. The Bulldogs looking for their first hit of the ball game. Kennedy, a 200 hitter on the year. Swing and a miss, and the count evens up. Mate goes down in the zone there to Kennedy, and, you know, we talk about, we've talked about it time and time again during this broadcast here. She is not limited in what she can do. She's all all over the place. She's up, down, in, out with the changeup. And so the one thing you want to see here is how the Bulldogs can adjust to everything they're seeing from May here in this in this ball game. The Bulldog right-handed hitting shortstop digs in. And awaits the 2-1 pitch. Grounded foul, third base side. Count back to even now at two and two. Kennedy, six hits on the season. 
has walked three times, struck out three times. And there you see the Bulldog skipper, Samantha Ricketts. And what can you say, what more can you say about, about the, the job she has done now in her fourth year and really only her third full year as the head coach? What she's done for this, this Bulldogs team has just elevated it in so many ways that you, you just can't explain. So for her, last year was only a portion of what she wants to do with this team. And you see her there. She, you know, every one of her, her players trust her and trust what she can do and trust her abilities as a head coach. So now you want to see, she wants to see elevation here. You, you made it to Supers last year. Not only made it, you hosted That's Supers right. last year with, with a, few, a few things that worked in the Bulldogs' favor hosted Supers last year for your first Super Regional appearance. Now you want to see what they can do this year, especially going into SEC play now. They're, it's, they're 17 and five right now. Not a bad record no. for this team, no. especially going into SEC play. So what you want to see is how they can elevate. And the one thing that they, you see that number right there in 2022 being maroon marking that they made it to a Super Regional. So for the first time in program history, first time. So now you want to see what they can do to elevate them on many levels. And for Coach Ricketts, she would love to get her squad to the College World Series. McKenna pops it up on the infield, calling off. Lilio is Jennings, and the shortstop grabs it for out number two after Kennedy was retired to begin the inning. Jackie McKenna just gets under that ball and you know pops it up into a you know a, a tough spot for you know you have three people that have to communicate with each other and everybody knows that the shortstop has priority in any situation so love to see the communication there between coleman jennings and the second baseman there and lilio at the plate now for mississippi state leadoff hitter macy graff 0 for one tonight Struck out swinging her first time up in the first. Still got a batting average of 439 as a true freshman, and she has, <laughs> Anthony, she is still shine and, and showed that, you know, as a freshman, she can do it as well. She, so she goes, hey, I have a teammate in Josie Mahern that can, that can do it in the circle. Guess what? I can do it out, out in this field too. So. No matter who she's facing, she is confident in her abilities and what she can do, and that's all you love to see in a true freshman is being confident in what they can do. Takes that ball high, and the count is now 3-0. A 3-0 count to Graf with St. Clair in the on-deck circle if Graf can reach base and keep the inning alive. And right now, the dogs will take some base runners any way they can get them down by five runs. Absolutely, knowing that they are probably few and far between here against this powerful Sooners pitcher in Nicole May, and also this powerful defense that's working behind her. Bulldogs offense just trying to find the hole and, and get one to drop, because they know if they can get one to drop, they can get two to drop. And then once you once you start, the, start it to roll, and you can, you can keep it going. A hitter's count to Graf. 3-1 pitch, check swing on a rise ball. She did not go around, and there's the walk. So two walks now to the Bulldogs tonight. And those are the two base runners for State. A two-out walk issue to Graf, and that brings up now the senior St. Clair with two gone and one on. Senior Briley St. Clair here would love nothing more than to put this ball into play and let her legs do the work. One thing we see her do is she goes her small ball a lot, and love to see it because the speedster in St. Clair just wants to get out, get that ball in the dirt and, and make her let her legs do the rest. Puts it in play, back to the pitcher, throws the first in time. A low throw, but May got it there in plenty of time. And the Bulldogs will strand a runner, and they trail five to nothing after three. Top of the fourth inning in Starkville, number one Oklahoma leading five to nothing over Mississippi State. Alongside Charlie Latham, I'm Anthony Craven, and there is your brand new Bulldog pitcher, Reese Burline. 
a freshman out of Cave Creek, Arizona. Five foot nine right-hander. Comes on in relief of the starter, Marin. And you look at the numbers on the year for Burline there, Charlie. Yeah, she has only one win, no losses on the year, ERA of 3.36. You know, not that many innings on the year. So here you see Coach Josh Johnson and Coach Ricketts putting her into this ball game saying, hey, you're not going to see very much or very many other hitters that are as good as the Sooners line. Correct. So, th th you know, the, the one thing they want to do is, hey, you want experience? You want to see what you can do? Because Josh Johnson's like, hey, let's do it. Let's ride. I, I trust you. I trust what you can do. Let's see what you can do here versus this powerful and explosive Sooner offense. And it gives Oklahoma something different to look at, too, in terms of the approach going from Marin to Burline as Jada Coleman, the top of the order, is back up at the plate. Coleman tonight one for two with a single and a run scored. Absolutely, and I guarantee you the one thought behind this was, hey, we're not gonna let the Sooners offense see Marin again in this ball game. Let's, let's get her out, get somebody fresh in that the Sooners have never seen because again, she's a true freshman as well. Reese Burline is. So, Great approach here from the Bulldogs and just keeping, trying to keep the Sooners down. Not not to say that they're down in this game, but you know, keep them on their toes. Oklahoma has scored at least a run in all three of their previous at bats. Try and make it four for four here in the top of the fourth, facing Burline as she makes her eighth appearance of the season and her sixth in relief. Downstairs, the walk is issued to Coleman. So Coleman's on base for the third time tonight. A single reached on an error, and now in her third at bat, reaches via the base on balls, one on and no one out for Jennings, the number two hitter in the lineup. Absolutely. She's, she's talk about getting thrown in the fire. She's going up against some of the best, starting off with Jada Coleman, now on to T.R.A. Jennings, who in her own right, powerful hitter here for the Sooners. So one thing you want to see here is how well Reese Perline can, you know, adjust to this, this powerful Sooner offense. And Jennings having a 415 batting average here with three home runs on the year, it, that's huge. You know, that's, that's not the best batting average in this lineup, but my God, I mean, four, right. four, 400. <laughs> Runner takes off for second, throw down is not quite in time, and Coleman, I think, injured herself. Well, that, she, she went for that slide in the second, and it, it didn't look pretty. No, it was not your, it was not a fluid slide at all. Yeah, you see it here. McKenna gets that ball down to Madison Kennedy, and couldn't I, tell if an ankle turned or no. spike in the dirt there and just jammed her leg, it looked like. She could be hyperextended something, you know. One thing you see here is Coach Gas. You see smiles you see on smile. the faces, which yeah. is good. That's a good sign. It's always a good sign. When you see when you see smiles, you know, hey, it, it does hurt, but we're gonna survive. So Coleman being a, as tough of a player as she is, she goes, "Hey, coach, you, you give me about a minute here, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be back and ready to go. I'm on second. Can you at least let me score? Don't take me out of this game just yet." So that's good to see that she's not limping off the diamond. That will be, I would imagine, a stolen base. Yeah, credit Coleman for a stolen base, her sixth of the year. I mean, <laughs> Anthony, six for six on the year. He's perfect. <laughs> that, that's a testament to the speed there in, in Coleman and, and how effective she is. I, one thing that that does tell me too is that she's very picky in when she steals, but also that she knows the best times in her mind that she can make it safely. There's a nice strike from Burline. Had to throw a strike and did. 
And the count now three and one on Jennings, who has struck out twice tonight, but that was that was against Marin. She's now facing Verline for the first time, looking to get on base tonight for the first time. Yeah, when I look at the stats here, kind of going back to, to Jada Coleman, when I look at the stats here, she is leading the team in stolen bases right now. Uh, right behind her is that speedster in Riley Boone with four, but she leads the team right now with six. And I mean, that that's a testament to what she does for the Sooners and what she brings and her abilities in this game. And it reveals a couple of things. One, she's fast, but also two, she gets on base a lot. Little looper that drops right in front of Graf. And you had the left side there of the infield, Charlie, playing deep on the dirt, actually back on the edge of the grass almost against Jennings, and neither Kennedy nor Graf could catch up that little blooper. Respectfully so, this defense playing back, they know the power that Jennings has, and not gonna necessarily say Jennings meant to do that, No, but it definitely worked in <laughs> that their was favor. A, that was a miss hit, <laughs> and that's how you know everything's going your way right now. Absolutely. One thing you, you like to see there is the Bulldogs understanding that, hey, that's going to happen. All right, let's not beat ourselves up about it. Let's go right back because now we have a fierce hitter in Haley Lee up to bat. And Haley Lee batting 479 right now with four home runs and 20 RBI. Look at that on base percentage, though, there, Anthony, and the 554. I mean, that's <laughs> That there in itself speaks to the type of player that Haley Lee is. Check swing foul ball right over there on top <laughs> of the first base dugout. Our camera, our camera crew here doing a, a great job tonight and love to love to always shout them out. Nikki over Look there. Look at Nikki. Look at Nikki. Yes. Gosh, we love to see it. Flat. Like she's back in her playing days over there. You know, she she just she feels like she's just, you know, she's back in her, her element. <laughs> Flashing the glove over there. Off speed, misses off the inside corner. Nice placement because there's nothing that Lee can do with that ball, but it's also taken for a ball that counts two and one. You see this pitch here to Haley Lee, and Berline knows, hey, I got to get this pitch in. That changeup was up, and she knew I'm going to either miss in. I'm not putting this ball over the plate no. for Lee. So it was in, but love to see the choice there from her. Fly ball. It'll stay on the infield, and Kennedy on the edge of the grass. Makes the grab. Big out there. Out number one as Coleman stays on at second, and Jennings stays put at first. So that's... Right now, if I'm correct, two miss hits on the inning. So, Burline's keeping them on their toes. Yeah, I mean, Burline, nothing's been hit solid off of Burline yet this inning. Now, I don't want to jinx it, okay? Don't, don't, D don't. Too late. Don't, don't, <laughs> did, didn't want to jinx it and say that. You can blame but, me. I jinxed it. it. You didn't jinx it. I jinxed <laughs> it. <laughs> but, but it's okay. Still, to see that this true freshman has come into this game against this powerful offense, this powerful offense in the Sooners and get miss hits is, is a testament to the work that this coaching staff for the Bulldogs and Coach Josh Johnson is doing to help them out and keep them going. Oklahoma elects to use a pinch hitter here in the cleanup spot. Jocelyn Erickson, a freshman lefty out of Phoenix, will step up to the plate for the first time tonight. And there you see her numbers on the year, <laughs> even better than the players she replaces in the lineup. Anthony, I mean, you just, you just can't. You can't pitch around anybody no. in, that the Sooners put up there. I mean, she has a 564 batting average right now. A OBP, oh, you guessed it, over 500. That, well, I'm, <laughs> and, I'm stunned. It, it's I'm almost, shook. It's almost, it's almost 600. It's 595. It's an embarrassment of riches <laughs> on the Oklahoma roster. You, you take out your cleanup hitter, Nugent, and you pitch it Erickson, and now the Bulldogs might have Coleman in a rundown, but Coleman gets back to the bag in time. McKenna a little frustrated there at herself, but well, it's hard to get Coleman off the bases. I mean, look, you see this replay here. 
McKenna does a great job at running at Coleman. She pump fakes there, almost gets Coleman far enough off. She runs at her and gets her back to second, very close to having her there at second base. So that veteran experience from Jackie McKenna there behind the plate, you love to see because Coach Ricketts, one will tell you that that play there, most people would throw it on that first pump fake. And McKenna was not fooled. She said, I'm going to pump fake, see if I can get you a little bit further off. All right. Almost gets her to go. And then I'm going to run at you to make sure that you don't at least get to third base on me. Well played. Back to the pitcher. Look over to third. No play there. Throw to first in time. Nicely done by Burline for out number two. Out number two here for Burline. And like I say again, there's another, you know, rollover, miss hit whatever you want to call it there for this Sooners offense. But they, you know, she's keeping them on their toes. They they may have moved in this two people in the scoring position here at second and third, but you do have two outs, all right? So now what you want to see here is Berline tighten down on what she's doing and go ahead and get out of this inning. Off speed, beautiful pitch I mean, to Brito for strike one. I don't think... I know I wasn't ready, but I don't think Brito was ready for that first pitch changeup from Burline there. Brito with a 429 batting average and three home runs on the year, 18 RBIs on the year so far, and gets a first pitch changeup. And, and again, second. Burline comes back. And listen, credit to MSU's coaching staff to make the move from Marin to Burline. Their styles are so different. It has definitely taken Oklahoma a little bit of time here in the fifth or in the fourth inning to make the adjustment against Burline. I can tell you that <laughs> Marin didn't throw this many changeups. No. And I don't think they were expecting it from Burline, and which is keeping them on their toes, and you love to see it from this freshman. The 0-2. Drop ball just missed, and the count goes to 1-2. and two. Home plate umpire James Colsey sticking to his call there, and I don't necessarily disagree with it. it may have been a little bit off, okay? But one ball, two strikes. Still a pitcher's count here. Love to see Berline know that you have two balls to work with, but also you might just go at her. You never know what can happen. Swing and a miss. How about that from the freshman, Berline? She gets the dogs out of the inning. Oklahoma strands a pair. No more run score. Soon We go to the home half of the fourth inning. Number one, Oklahoma holding on to a fairly comfortable 5 nothing lead here in Starkville. The Bulldogs will have at the plate a good part of the lineup here, Charlie. Mala Ulu, Cook, and Brownlee, the three, four, and five hitters. Absolutely. Can, let, me, let me go to this real quick just before. So we talked about conference play starting. I, I got the scores pulled up here, all right? Let's do it. Let, all right, let's do it. Let's see if we can get it in, all right? Tennessee, Ole Miss, or Ole Miss at Tennessee, 6 nothing win for Tennessee, all right? Going down the line, Kentucky at Mizzou. Kentucky, 5 to nothing win there. Um, Alabama at Texas, 5-3 five th five to three in the top of the seventh Texas way, okay? Then go down a little bit further, you got Auburn at Georgia, it's tied at 4-4 right now in the bottom of the fourth. Mm. Uh, obviously, we have our game going on, and then you have A&M at Arkansas. Bottom of the fourth, 7 nothing right now, Arkansas. Arkansas getting off to a, or it looks like they're getting off to a strong start after a fantastic season a year ago in Fayetteville. A absolutely. They're, they're led by their now sophomore pitcher in Shanice Dales in the circle. So, you know, give credit to... Coach Courtney Dyfel there doing a great job with that program yep. and just absolutely changing it for the better. Mala Ulu hits one, a little check swing, excuse me, hit, and it drops into the glove of the second baseman Lilio in shallow right field for out number one. You see, Chloe Mala Ulu tried to hold up there on net. She just couldn't. Her bat got around, that barrel got around, and Popped it up right there to that three, I'd like to say three, four hole there, but nevertheless fielded by the second baseman in Lilio. 
So no one on and one gone for Paige Cook, who had a quality at bat her first time up against May. Drew a walk back in the second to become, at that point, State's first base runner. Anthony, we talk about veteran experience. You look at this battery here that we got going in Nicole May and Kenzie Hansen, and it speaks volumes for a pitcher in Nicole May to have a, a catcher that's, you know, as well versed as Kenzie Hansen is behind the plate. Kenzie Hansen still in strikes back there for a left and right where you see balls that may be a little bit off the plate. Hansen is bringing them back into the zone and saying, hey, hey, Co hey, hey, Blue, I'm, I'm, I'm putting this ball here for my pitcher. Can we get the call? And she gets it. Nothing in two. May way out in front of Cook now. Cook fights that one off, fouls it back. She'll stay alive to see at least one more pitch. Don't worry, Anthony, we don't have to field that one. I think that went a little bit over our head there. Well, now that I know that you're ready, <laughs> I'm not worried. Hey, head on a swivel, all right? You know, it, 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 this net is right here in front of us. Doesn't mean it's going to always protect us. No. They, <laughs> if they could have gone back and redesigned this place, which is a, it's a great ballpark, by the way, but probably could have made the netting about one <laughs> foot taller. Speaking of redesign, though, Anthony, over to our left here is a building that, <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> It's going to be very impressive once it's done. It's almost there. It is almost there. Nevertheless, something that is a tool for the Bulldogs to, to be able to. That ball is going to roll up the third base line and be fair, thrown away in the right field. Cook will get on her horse and end up all the way at second base. Dogs have a runner on in scoring position with only one out here in the fourth inning. Here's another check swing right here. Let's see this replay here. Another check swing that works out in the Bulldogs' favor. That ball just rolls right down the line. And I mean, Brito just, she feels that ball on the run and it just sails on her. So what does Paige Cook do? She takes the opportunity. She's like, hey, I'm going to second to be the first runner for the Bulldogs in scoring position today. That ball that was thrown away by Brito actually ended up in the bullpen area. So I guess technically that might be scored a, a ground rule double. Ah, they're gonna say a single, yeah, 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 single and then a, a throwing error advances Cook over to second base. So State, now can they take advantage? Got a runner on at second base, less than two outs, a good hitter in Brownlee at the plate. Absolutely, you look for your veteran senior in Brownlee here, be patient, get her pitch. Put this ball somewhere, either on the right side of the field or in a gap, and see Paige Cook run. Because we all know, too, Paige Cook may not have the stolen bases on the year, but she's a speedster. Brownlee tonight 0 for 1. Foul tip for a strike. 1 and 2 of the count. She Flew out to Coleman in center field her first time up, did Brownlee. So she's looking for her first hit and looking to get State's second hit. We forgot to mention, Paige Cook broke up the no-no. She did. With that little with that dribbler up the line towards third base a moment ago. Sometimes that's all you need. Uh, how often do you see a, a mid to late inning no-hit bid broken up by an infield single or a bloop single? Um, often, right? <laughs> <laughs> and like I said earlier, anything to get this started, you know, for the Bulldogs, they want to they want to see this thing get to rolling here. You only got one out in the inning, one two count here to Brownlee. Swing and a miss, tagged out by the catcher, Hanson, and that'll be out number two. Okay, so we talk about Brownlee there being dangerous, but here here in the five hole, after we take a look at this real quick. This ball here from Nicole, man, this drop ball, she, she throws what you call a, a peel drop. She gets behind that ball and just lets it roll off those fingertips down. And there, it's very effective because Brownlee saw it out of the hand thinking it was going to stay up and it definitely just dove on her. But to my point before, you have experience come up right behind Brownlee in Landers. 
So what you want to see here is if Landers can say, hey, I've been here before. I've been up against this team before. I just want to put this ball in the gap to the right side and see if I can get Paige in. Ground ball fielded by this short stop Jennings throwing the first in time six to three Landers is retired and the Bulldogs will strand a runner on in scoring position and they troll Oklahoma by five after four. Top of the fifth in Starkville Oklahoma five Mississippi State zero. Bulldogs will have Burline back out there in the circle for her second inning of relief work. And it appears that Charlie, they also have made a change in right field and brought in Selena Daniel to replace Paige Cook. So not only did they do that, they also brought in Riley Hull um, into first to replace Juana Brown. So you see, the, you see the Bulldogs going to a little bit of a defensive shift here, maybe to get a, a natural outfielder there in, in right field and Daniel, uh, to you know be able to get to jump on these balls, keep the Sooners from, from running the score up a little bit more. And then on first, you have Riley Hull, who is in herself a sophomore, but not, not your average sophomore. She came in last year and took this team by a storm and, and had a, great season for the Bulldogs taking their first base spot last year and I mean as a freshman last year she she showed up and showed out so the one thing that to note there is her bat was absolutely on fire last year for the Bulldogs so now you see coach Ricketts and her staff bringing in a little bit a little bit change ups here and, and let's see what you know they can do on the defensive side of things high fly ball shallow and left Kennedy underneath it and she makes the catch, and Kenzie Hansen, the catcher for Oklahoma, leadoff hitter in the fifth inning, is retired fairly quickly for out number one. That ball a mile high hit in the air there by Hansen. Love to see Kennedy get there and camp under that ball, but not, not just get there and, and stiffen up. She, she kept those feet moving and making sure that, you know, we have little to no wind here tonight, but you know, making sure that ball doesn't do anything funky on her in the air. It now brings up Torres. So that must have been a straight switch then at the DP spot last inning because Torres remains in there hitting in the seven hole. Let's see here. I no. Uh, yeah, because that was Boone that was who got the start in that, at that position. Torres hits one hard. Malahulu, though, on the run, makes the grab right down the line and left for out number two. Senior outfielder Chloe Malahulu here does exactly what she needs to do in reading this ball off the bat of Torres, getting a great jump. Here we look at this replay here and see that, I, I mean, this is an absolute rocket off the bat of Torres, and Malahulu all over this ball from the time they came off the bat. So you love to see that from your senior and saying, hey, yeah, I've gotten a couple down this line on me earlier. Y'all not gonna get this one on the ground that stays up enough for me to get under it or get behind it. Swing and a miss at the plate now is Sydney Sanders, the first baseman for Oklahoma. And how about the job Burline has done in relief so far for State and ending in two thirds. One hit, no runs. One walk, one strikeout. Sanders has been that, that pesky hitter for the, the Bulldogs all day today. Whether she gets hit by the pitch or she just, I mean, she gets walked. And yep. So what you you want to see here is you want to see Reese Berlin just go right at her. Say, hey, I want to, I got a 1-1 count on you right now. I, I want to go right at you. And there's that change up again. I, you notice that change of her go-to pitch right now, and it, she's effective with it. Yeah, Coach, very Coach, effective so far. Coach Josh Johnson is catching these Oklahoma hitters off by throwing this change up in counts that they're not expecting. For Sanders there, she was definitely looking fast, and she, she was not seeing a change up. There's the rise ball, foul back. 
late swing that time from Sanders to stay alive. It counts a ball and two strikes. There you see the Bulldog dug out with head coach Samantha Ricketts and then associate head coach Josh Johnson immediately to her left. Coach Josh Johnson, if I may note here, is going for his PhD. <laughs> I don't know if very many softball coaches will <laughs> We'll say that. I'm gonna call him the pitching doctor. Oh, absolutely, pitching guru. I, 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 I don't know what 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 else to call him other than a mastermind of his craft, because he knows how well he how how good he is as a coach. All he wants to do is be more effective. There is strike three. Burline rings up Sanders, and that's a great job there by the freshman Burline. Nice crowd here on hand in Starkville tonight. Having a good time. Oklahoma leads Mississippi State 5 0, and it feels like Charlie, the Bulldogs have kind of calmed things down after Oklahoma scored in their first three at bats. The defense and the pitching of the freshman Burline have kept the score right where it is now at 5 0. As we now go to the home half of the fifth. One thing you love to see here is you look at the scoreboard right now and, and the scoring column, one, two, two, zero, zero. So they've definitely done it where they've they've settled into this ball game. It's like, hey, we know what we can do. Trust our ability, get through this thing, and, and see what you can do. Now you just want this Bulldogs offense to get started because you know that they, they are much better than what they are showing right now. So with a great batter and Nadia Barbary coming up here. We noted her earlier. See if she can get things started here as a true freshman versus versus Nicole May here. Yeah, Barbary followed by Kennedy and then McKenna, the bottom three in the order. Do it up here in the bottom of the fifth. Check swing, foul tip, and Barbary frustrated right there. She knew that was a ball she could hit. Yes, very frustrated in herself too because as, as we've seen this game, these Bulldog hitters are, you know, they're second guessing themselves. And what you want to see them do is be confident in their decision. All right, hey, I, I know I want to swing at this. Let's do it. Let's commit fully to this pitch because whether like that, you know, it, the ball may have been above her head, but she committed to it, which is you can still put a, a good a good hit on a ball that's out of the zone, as we've seen. Brownlee do from time, time and time again right. <laughs> to Paige Cook do time and time again. So, you know, trust yourself and trust your decisions. Swing and a miss and a strikeout for May, her fifth of the ball game. That's a good start to the inning for Nicole May. You see this replay here, and May goes inside, and <laughs> that is a great pitch by this junior, Nicole May. And, just painting that corner, inside corner. With two strikes, you have to you have to try to put a swing on that ball. I like to see Nicole Mays. She did she went rise ball, rise ball, and then what I would like to call it, a screw ball or fastball inside there to not get ball. Three. Slow roller back to the circle. May picks it up and throws to first in time to get the out quickly of Kennedy. And I thought that was a check swing. Ball yeah. put in the play that time by the MSU shortstop. Definitely was a check swing again by this Bulldogs offense. And like, like I said, you know, you have a, a veteran Jackie McKenna coming up here. But before that, just kind of looking down at the dugout there, you see Coach Ricketts turn around talking to her senior and Madison Kennedy like, hey, you got you got to trust yourself, okay? You got you got to trust your abilities and what you can do. Don't second guess it. All right. So, you know one thing that she's going to look back at film. You know, regardless of the outcome of this game, she's going to go back and look at film. And she's going to go, hey guys, we got to trust what we can do in our abilities because we're better than that. McKenna hits one hard right at Boone in left field for out. Top of the sixth inning, you see the former All-American, Mia Davidson, <laughs> getting the catcher's mitt back on. She, 
you know, she's a professional athlete now, but you know, she's, she misses this atmosphere and being under these lights here at News Park. So Mia Davidson brings so much to this Bulldogs coaching staff that Coach Rickett said, I, I can't let her go just yet. I gotta, I gotta keep her here and get as much as I can out of her while I got her here. What an asset she is too for the returning players and the newcomers on State's team. The all time home run leader both at Mississippi State and in the Southeastern Conference. Absolutely, and I mean, she was competing with some great hitters, um, kind of marquee hitters. I mean, one marquee hitter on this team here in Haley Lee, another one in Bailey Hemp Hill, graduated from Alabama, came very close to beating Mia Davidson, but fortunately fortune for Mia, came up a little shy. I mean, there's so many more in there, but she, she has absolutely shined as a, a player here for Mississippi State. Now she gets to rub off on some of these younger players that are coming up behind her. Specifically, I like to note she's rubbed off a lot on first baseman right now, Riley Hull, and behind the dish right now, and Jackie McKenna. You know, two people that she basically took under her wings. Jada Coleman at the plate after Lilio quickly flew out to left. Reese Burline remains in the circle. Third inning of relief work for the Bulldog freshman right-hander after Marin, another MSU freshman righty, got the start. And Charlie, so far, what's impressed you most about Burline's performance? Her ability to keep these sooner hitters on their toes and off guard. I, I can't note that enough right now. And now this is their second time seeing her. But in her first time through the lineup, I mean, she she just, she just did her job. She she has done her job and is continually, continually doing it now. But just the, the fact that she's able to throw that change up in there at times when they're not expecting it has been, I mean, that's been a treat for me to watch. I don't know about you. I've enjoyed watching that and seeing her keep this Sooner lineup just off guard and what she's going to throw. Jada Coleman has been on base three times tonight, a single and a run scored in the first. She reached on an error and was left at third in the second, then was walked and again, Stranded at third, back in the fourth inning. Batting now in the top of the sixth, trying to expand on Oklahoma's five-run lead. And she draws her second walk of the ball game, make it four for four in terms of reaching base safely tonight for the Sooners, Jada Coleman. That home base percentage definitely going up for Coleman. And to no surprise, she is a great hitter in in order to be a great hitter, you have to be decisive in what you're going to swing at at this level of softball. And Coleman's just displaying her, what she's able to do there. Now she's able to turn the bat over to a player in Tiare Jennings who knows exactly what to do. Yeah, almost sent that one out of the yard. Just missed it by a hair. And St. Clair makes the grab in deep center field for out number two. What you like to see there is St. Clair get get that ball in as quick as she did because noting earlier, Jada Coleman's not afraid to take the next base. So, you know, great pitch by Berlin getting T.R. Jennings to pop that ball up in the outfield. It was deep. I, I will say it was a deep hit fly ball. Nevertheless, she got the out, two outs in the inning now, and a powerful hitter in Taylor Lee up the bat for the Sooners offense. Yeah, big time swing and a miss right there. Strike one from the DP, Haley Lee, who is two for three tonight so far with a couple of singles, including an RBI in the first and a run scored in the third. I feel like I've said this so much, this broadcast here, Anthony, and so many of these Sooners have a 500 or better on base percentage and Lee coming in right to this at to this at bat here a 544 on base percentage I mean <laughs> what's yeah you have to be incredibly impressed with yes the production right the number of hits the RBIs all that but so many hitters one through nine have drawn more walks than they have been struck out so far this year too absolutely but 
to that note, again, I'm going to flip the script here and go to, for the Bulldogs. That is why it's so good to see a pitcher like Reese Berline, true freshman, come in and do what she's doing. I mean, these on-base percentages aren't just, like you said earlier, from this game today. These on-base percentages are from the 18 games they played prior to this. So <laughs> to be able to keep them off guard, like there. You know, Haley Lee, she knows that changeup's coming. She doesn't know when. She knows it's coming. I like to see her sit. She sat back there on that changeup a little bit out front still. But that she was more prepared at that time. Now you have to look at it as from a standpoint of Coach Josh Johnson and a pitcher of Reese Berline. It's like, hey, all right, maybe they're on to my changeup. But at the same time, I still got them on their toes just a little bit. A 2-2 count on Lee. One on and two gone. Burline's ready, here it is. Hard hit ball, deep to left. Is it fair or foul? It is foul. Not a home run. It left the yard in a hurry, but it was foul. Anthony, that ball was absolutely rope. But, nevertheless, foul ball. But still, will not take away from the power that Haley Lee has. You know, you saw off that bat. I mean, from our vantage point, you can't. You, you, you're sitting, can't really see down that line as well. But that, I mean, that was hit on the absolute line. Yeah. The only question was, would it stay fair or go foul? Did not miss by much, but it was just a bit foul. So the Bulldogs catch a break, and the at-bat continues. Timeout call. There you see Coach Gasso giving instructions to, to Lee. With a 2-2 with a two -two count here, I can only imagine Coach Gasso goes, hey, great, great way to barrel that ball up. But you're going to have to do it again. Right. <laughs> and this time, make sure it's on that side of the foul pole. That ball is hit foul. Late swing that time from Lee. But she'll stay alive. Count remains two and two. I don't think she. I don't think she has a ball. <laughs> but to going back to it, Coach Gasso there knows that hey, Haley Lee thought hey I definitely I, I may have gotten that ball across in fair territory. So Coach Gasso calls a timeout and calls her over and says hey, I know you felt that home run. Thought sure it was yours, but now you're gonna have to do it again. So let's settle back into this at bat because you have some you have a score to finish here. Leave that time way out in front as Burline changed speeds. A lengthy at bat happening right here. The count remains two and two. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. With a runner on at first base, that's Coleman. The Sooners have yet to score a run against Burline. He came, who came on in relief a couple of innings ago. That ball is blocked up in the dirt, but not gloved cleanly by McKenna. And Coleman alertly takes off for second and reaches base there safely. We talk about veteran catcher and Jackie McKenna all the time being a ball magnet behind the plate. And, and there, I think, I think that ball missed her chest protector. and and her wrist guard there. I think it, it missed all of it and caught just the bare skin of her, her arm. So you, you see home plate umpire James Cozy there say, hey, let me let me wipe this plate off, give you a second to shake that one off so we can get back into this. Nevertheless, tough player in Jackie McKenna back behind the oh, plate. Oh yeah. The everyday catcher for the Bulldogs so far this season. Ground ball to Kennedy, who throws across in time and Burline. Again, throws a clean inning in the top of the six. Here's the game summary so far. Oklahoma, Charlie, got scoring in the first, in the second, and the third to take a commanding 5-0 lead. Some good at-bats there. Also, a couple of errors committed by Mississippi State. And Oklahoma, there's one of those errors that led to a couple of unearned runs scoring. And State's kind of calmed things down since the third, but Oklahoma jumped on top early and right now lead by five. 
don't want to take anything away from this Sooners offense. But this should probably only be a three to nothing game right now because of costly errors by, uncommon costly errors by your two seniors in Malaulu and Brownlee. So the one thing here to take away from the Bulldogs is, hey, we're, we're at the top of our lineup right now. We have six outs to work with. Let's make them the six hardest outs for Oklahoma to get. Let's try to put some pressure on them here because at the end of the day, they know that their abilities are much better than what they're showing. Haley Lee has been one of the biggest offensive weapons for Oklahoma today. Two hits and an RBI. Nobody else for Oklahoma has had a multi-hit game. The state's done a pretty good job, especially since Burline came on in relief of holding this explosive offense in check as Macy Graff puts one on the ground right out towards second. It's gloved and thrown to first in time for out number one. Uh, Graff catch that ball at the end of her bat there, and you know, Nicole May saw where that ball was a little bit too far out of her reach, and I love how she just took her glove back and let her second baseman in Lilio take just take command of that ball and make it a run through for an easy play, easier play for Lilio to make there than Nicole May if she was just to take that ball over. So no one on and one gone for St. Clair. Hits the first pitch back and foul and out of play for strike one. Here's a part of the lineup for the Bulldogs where they have to get things going if they want to see production. It, you know, talking a little bit earlier with you, we see right now in the scoring column, no, no runs on one hit, two errors. Biggest thing there is you want to see though, that error go down. Throw to first, won't be in time. That's a butt single, another butt single for Briley St. Clair, and she's on the bases now for the first time tonight. If she watched this replay here, Anthony, where we always talk about Briley St. Clair using the small ball to her advantage. I mean, she put that ball right where it needed to be in order for her to use her legs and beat it out. And you see here, she beats it by the step. Yeah. So that's what you, this defense, that she's playing up against right now is not shabby at all by any means. So to put pressure on them by using your small ball and then passing it back to your senior in Malaulu, that's big time. Speed on the bases for Mississippi State trying to get their first run of the ball game. The captain, Malaulu, steps up 0 for 2 so far tonight. A fly out in the first and a pop out in the fourth. A 308 hitter on the season. Had her average dip to just below 300 momentarily. Then had a big game last night against Southeastern Louisiana. Now has that average on the season back above 300. Absolutely. And, and Malou, the captain of this squad, you see that captain C on her left shoulder. You know, she is she is one of the most trusted people on this Bulldogs roster, and that's a testament to what she's done since she's been here at Mississippi State. And the one thing that Coach Rickett says is, I can trust her with any and everything about my squad and my team. So that's a testament to who she is and, and what she provides to this Bulldogs team. They count 3-0. and oh. Mala Ulu has not been on base yet tonight. Taking all the way, and the rise ball's in there from May for a strike, and the count three and one. Nicole May, a five and a third so far outing. He's only surrendered two base hits. Both have been infield singles. No runs, two walks, five strikeouts. In the dirt, and there is the third walk drawn tonight by the Bulldogs. And they, for the first time tonight, Charlie, have two runners on base and just one out here in the bottom of the sixth. First time tonight with two runners on. Second time tonight with a runner in scoring position. Only one out, all right? Anthony, so here's what, here's what you want to see here from the Bulldogs. You got the pressure. You're putting your foot on the gas. Keep it there. Do your job. Pass the bat. You never know what you can do here. Five runs, it may seem a little bit far out of reach here, but 
anything's possible. I've seen, <laughs> seen a lot of crazy things happen. Cook is now the batter. She's had two good at-bats tonight for State. Drew a walk in the second, had a base hit in the fourth to break up the no-no bid. State, though, has still not hit a ball hard into the outfield tonight against Nicole May, who has now thrown 75 pitches, and nothing dominant, nothing overpowering tonight from May. Line drive, could be a double play, and it is. Nicole May gets a line drive right to the shortstop Jennings, and St. Clair gets doubled off the bag a second, and Oklahoma, just like that, gets out of the inning. What a play. You see this double play here by veteran Tiare Jennings off the bat of Paige Cook. She knows it's right to me and I have to get it out very quick. Welcome back to Starkville News Park. Big crowd on hand tonight for much of the night. A few folks have headed home. Top of the seventh inning, five to nothing. Oklahoma on top of Mississippi State. Charlie, we've mentioned that a couple of times tonight. It is the opening night of SEC softball for League action, not everybody in action tonight playing in a league game, but there you see a bunch of scores tonight, tons of ranked matchups and some I, no surprising results yet. The, I think the team that was supposed to win has won every game. Maybe Texas beating Alabama, a little bit of a surprise. That game, though, in Austin tonight, but some good action around the SEC tonight. Absolutely, and that Texas-Bama game, you know, it's a real good matchup because, like we noted earlier, Texas will be moving to this conference in the SEC next season. In two seasons. In two seasons? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that's that's big time for Bama to be able to go out there and compete with Texas. Now, the one thing you, you know is Bama's a great squad, and Patrick Murphy has built one of the marquee squads in this league with a, you know, senior in Montana Fouts in the circle, uh, not to mention a senior in Ashley Prangy at third, Bailey Dowling. I, they have so many tools that, you know, they are using to, you know, build a squad that they have. So the one thing you want to see, not to mention, too, they have a couple freshmen as well that are showing out for them. So now you, you know that that, that may have been a, a test. That score may not show exactly what their weekend's going to look like just yet. Also, two, didn't know two, two squads. You didn't see two teams on there in the SEC right now playing, which is LSU and South Carolina. Well, they have the Saturday, Sunday, Monday series. So now, you know, you're probably getting to see some SEC play here. Yeah, welcome back, SEC softball. We've missed you. At the plate tonight, or at the plate right now for Oklahoma, is the third baseman, Alyssa Brito, after Erickson got on to lead off the inning. A hard hit ball that just got past the Bulldog second baseman, Barbary. You see that ball went right under Barbary's glove. You know the one thing there, give her an A for effort there, but you know, just, just a little bit out of her reach, understandable. Now you have a run on first, no outs. You just settle in here with Brito up the bat and see if see if you can get a, a double play ball here. If you reach for line for your defense, you make the, the inning a little bit a little bit easier. A 2-0 pitch right at the knees for a strike. Burline's done a really good job locating her pitches tonight. The drop ball has been located well for a strike. The change up has been beautiful tonight for Burline, and that just makes everything. When you can locate your drop ball, and the off speed is dropping in for strikes, makes everything so much easier for you as a pitcher. You talk about this too, going up against a Sooners lineup that is a power pack lineup. And you see that ball there, whiffed on by Brito, but catches Jackie McKenna. Which? Again, <laughs> ball magnet behind the plate. Every veteran, game. Vet, veteran, Every game. Vet, can I say veteran ball magnet? Yes. <laughs> so I, one thing you like to see, though, is her grit. And she rubs a little dirt on and say, all right, we're good. Let's let's get through it. Here's, if, look at this replay here and see that. I mean, <laughs> ah, that Brito catches the end of yeah. that. Yeah, sure. Catches the ball at the end of that. Sure did. So, 
that, that doesn't feel good, Anthony, by any stretch. Mm -hmm. But never ball came right down on top of that left thigh, right above the knee. So you, lo you, lo you just love to see the grit behind the plate there from Jackie McKenna. Now, hopefully she can get her freshman pitcher back into this this at bat with a 2-2 two -two count here versus a very good hitter in Lisa Brito with a 420 batting average. See if Reese Burline can keep up what she's been doing so far in keeping this sooner, these sooner hitters on their toes. Brito tonight, one for three. A ground out in the first, a double and an RBI and a run scored back in the third as she fouls back this ball into the stands. And the count is two and two. The, her last time up, Brito struck out swinging. So she has one previous at bat against Burline. Her first two at bats came against Merritt. They sure did. I was I was just looking at the stat <laughs> the stat line there, and I was like a double. And remember quickly that it was the double down the line that scored one. Yeah, that was a big at bat. Hard hit ball deep to left center. See you later. That's a huge two-run bomb from Brito. And Oklahoma has tacked on some insurance runs here in the seventh inning. They now are on top, seven to nothing. Our first home run of the ball game. First home run of the ball game, but Brito's fourth. If you look at this replay here, Brito is ready for this pitch. Low and in, and she absolutely just puts a charge in this, into this ball. Oh, that left center fence and gives the Sooner two more runs on top of their already five runs. So now seven nothing. What you want to see now is Furline go, all right, one pitch, shrug it off. Here we go. Because nevertheless, veteran and Kenzie Hansen up the bat now, who is someone who can quickly make one home run. Not, not look so much <laughs> like a home run. She's put a charge in the ball as well herself. So seven to nothing, Oklahoma on top. Their first two runs against Burline. They had been held scoreless through the fourth, fifth, and sixth innings. But a two run home run here in the seventh inning. Their first run scored against the Bulldog reliever, Reese Burline. Now the 0 1 in there for a strike to Hansen, the catcher, who tonight's gone one for three. She had a base hit back in the third, a simple single up that left side. Did not score, nor did she drive in a run. So a pretty quiet night tonight offensively for the catcher, Hanson. Absolutely, and Hanson on the season so far with 29 at that, 10 hits, 17 RBI, one walk and four strikeouts. So tough to strike out. Oh man. McKenna again gets a foul ball that time it was off the bat, off the dirt, and it comes back and pops McKenna, I think, in the shoulder. I mean, tonight she is absolutely taking a beating behind the plate in this ball. Oh, got her right underneath right. the arm, she, under the wing. She like, the, the, and that, the chest protector, it, it, it protects a lot, but it can only protect so much, and that ball has seemed to found every crack that you know, that McKenna has in her gear. So, you know, the one thing now, your catcher's taking a beating, but Burline's like, hey, hey, we're, we're in this together. And, and Jackie McKenna's like, hey, I've, I've definitely felt worse. It, it, I've, I've gotten beat up all season. I'm not gonna gripe over this one. Let's, let's, go, let's go with these sooner hitters and get out of this. That ball fouled back and the count remains one and two. It never feels good to get a ball caught underneath your arm like that. But on a cold night, especially, that's going to sting a little extra. Yeah, right now it's 52 degrees out here, Anthony, and I guarantee you that 52 feels like a, probably 32 when that ball hits you. We've definitely had colder games, but a little chilly tonight. Pop up. Center field, St. Clair underneath it, makes the catch for out number two. If I'm not mistaken there, another change up from, from Burline there to catch Kenzie Hansen on her front foot and just get under that ball. And what you like to see there is Burline go, hey, 
you're gonna beat my catcher up behind the plate. I'm gonna you're gonna fly out for that one. <laughs> so <laughs> love to see it, you know. Just her get her first out there, and now she has to see the speedster and Riley Boone. See what she can do there. See what she can do here with a speedy Riley Boone up. One thing I will like to note here, first baseman Riley Hull playing behind the ball, up behind the bag, per se, here. So maybe they're playing a little bit of a one back here, pull graft in at third a little bit closer than what she'd normally play because they know that Hull's going to have to get back to the bag pretty quick. We haven't seen Boone at the plate since the second inning. Ball hit towards the third baseman. Throw to first is there in time. Nicely done by Graff to get the out of Boone at first base. I mean, heck of a play there by Macy Graff. You see his replay here. I mean, takes her time. She knows that Riley Boone's fast, but gets this ball, fields it. And credit to Nadia Barbary for being there and being ready for that, yes. to receive that ball from Graff. Freshman on freshman combo there for, the, there for the out for the speedster and Riley Boone. Now with two outs in the inning, you have now where a little bit, a little bit less pressure. See what they can do here. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we have a pinch hitter here in Avery Hodge. Yeah, we haven't seen Hodge tonight. So Boone out at first base, and now the pinch hitter Hodge steps in. Number 82. Guess what? She's, She's a, a fresh hitter. She's a freshman as well. Backhanded by Kennedy, thrown to first in time. Nicely done by the Bulldog left side of the infield. And they get the out. We head now to the home half of the seventh inning. Mississippi State down to its final three outs and a seven run deficit to make up against the number one team in the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners. It'll be Riley, actually Aquana Brownlee, who is being inserted back into the game in place of Riley Hole, who will lead things off for State in the seventh inning. So Brownlee followed by Landers, and then Barbary, those are the three hitters due up to face May, who's trying to go the distance in the circle for Oklahoma. Real quick, before we get into this, this, this half in a little bit further, I don't want to note, it's a busy night here in Starkville. You've got softball playing tonight here, and you have baseball also, a, a couple buildings behind us playing in Duty Noble, and their score right now is eight to nothing versus against Lipscomb. So, I mean, a great weekend for some softball, some baseball, and I mean, it, you can't beat that in Stark, good old Stark Vegas. Tonight. That's right. Got the Bulldog Invitational here at News Park and a three-game set between the Bulldogs and the Bison of Lipscomb over at the Dude. I mean, you, you can't draw it up any better. What a, what a, a great weekend for, you know, some atmosphere, not to mention also, too, we have Super Bulldog Weekend coming up uh, April 15th. Round ball over to third, thrown across in time. Brito makes the play. Brownlee is retired. Tough night tonight offensively for Aquana Brownlee. She goes to 0 for 3 at the plate. Un uncommon night for, for Aquana Brownlee. And the one thing I will say is that, you know, she, she would love to have better nights than this. She, you know, if, say, that was her last at bat, that does snap an 11 game hit streak for her. And, you know, for her, she may she may say, hey, like, I, I, I know for, for certain we didn't want to see it, but she didn't want to see that 11 game streak, hitting streak snap tonight. But, you know, Nicole May's done her job tonight. She has a great hitter like Kirsten Landers right now, 0 for 2 on the night. Uh, one thing that she had, she will do is she she will give credit, but she won't she won't say that she was better than me. I was just off my game, which completely understand. Uh, you know, it's some great hitters mentality. Hey, she can't beat me. She just got the best of me tonight. I, I, here's the thing: Nicole May's done a fantastic yes, job. Yes, she tonight. has. Six and a third, just two hits, no runs. 
Three walks, five strikeouts. The 1-1 one -one to Sanders, take it high, ball two. So still, the ERA is a perfect 0, 0.00 for the veteran Nicole May, the right-hander, trying to go the distance tonight, pick up the win for Oklahoma. What I will say, too, is this is not their last matchup as well. They will see each other again tomorrow. Now, unfortunately, we unfortunate for us, fortunate probably for the viewers a little bit, we have to pass it off to the professionals and, and Tiffany Green and Madison Shipman tomorrow. That's, but That's a good that's a good broadcast <laughs> oh, duo right there. Oh, my goodness. Credit, credit to them for all they do in, in the sports world, man. You know, they're... They provide a, a tool to this game, insight to this game, with firsthand experience, especially Madison Shipman in her own right, great player. So now being able to commentate and, and give insight is <laughs> fantastic. Landers chases a rise ball. She strikes out. That is strikeout number six tonight for May. And now she and the Sooners are an out away from getting a victory which would be their second today. They defeated Southeastern Louisiana earlier today and threw a perfect game in the process. Shorty Ball, an absolute dominating performance today versus Southeastern Louisiana. Not surprised at all. Great pitcher in Jordy Ball. And then <laughs> That's gonna do it. Matalasi Favito on the very first pitch. The, the Bulldog pinch hitter drives one right out to the shortstop Jennings, and the ball game comes to a close. Oklahoma looking, Charlie, very much like the defending national champions. They defeat Mississippi State 7-0. Absolutely, and marquee performance here by Nicole May and, and what she's done. And to, to her, you know, for her, that th this was a great outing. To keep that ERA down, still at a 0.00, .00 great for her. But she couldn't do it alone. Her hitters absolutely backed her up tonight with seven runs on the board. And Haley Lee having, what a game for Haley Lee. Not to mention what a shot by Alyssa Brito to just put a cap on a great night for the Sooners hitters. For Charlie Latham, I'm Anthony Craven. Thanks to everyone back in the control room and the camera operators, the whole team tonight. Great job as Oklahoma defeats Mississippi State seven to nothing here at the Bulldog Invitational. These same two teams play tomorrow afternoon on the SEC Network.